there is a gentleman behind me i wanted to show and that is the armstrong building with a delta wing on the top it's hard to show the entire building hello everyone i think i hope uh, you can hear my voice even with uh, this mask i think i can remove the mask outdoors now that i have got first shot of vaccine as well so i'm more a safer person <laughs> but uh, you can see there is no one around so i have removed my mask and uh so i believe uh, there are a lot of students uh, who are joining in from ahmednagar maharashtra if no, i am not wrong um Hi. although there might be students from other parts of india so namaste uh, greetings to all and since a uh, lot of the audience is from maharashtra i would uh, say uh, apan kasa ta hai majhe majhe tangla everyone no, doing great uh hope you all are staying safe i know it's a pandemic situation and a uh, lot of people back in home country are facing lot of tough situation but uh, like our teacher says uh, although time is tough we should always uh, look for opportunities in tough times and see this as a bottom of our uh, life like okay this is the worst it could get but things will get better so uh, i hope you all stay safe and all your family members have a healthy time uh so start that uh, because health is the first right uh, even if we talk about human space flight uh which is the topic of today so why are we here why am i uh, standing here in the morning and uh, talking to you guys is because today is a great day in human space flight history uh so this day around 60 years back uh, we had the first man who was launched from the world i would say uh not just soviet russia or ussr Uh, his name is Yuri Gagarin. Uh, you might be knowing about him. So today is uh, famously known as Yuri's Day. Uh, but I accidentally happened to be at a place where there have been 25 such people who have gone or left uh, the gravity of Earth. Uh, so this is the cradle of astronauts at Purdue University, and I am right next to the Neil Armstrong Hall of Engineering. You can see a lot of protect Purdue protocols being followed here, and trying to inspire through the steps taken on Moon by. Neil Armstrong the first steps on moon and they have some beautiful settings uh, this is a replica of how uh, Neil Armstrong actually landed and then he moved and he had a jump i don't know how far i can go with this wifi but that is what you see there are some people around so i might have to wear mask in between but you can see there is an abrupt jump between here and there that's because the gravity of the moon is 1/6 so he had a huge jump and he was celebrating his success in some ways uh maybe yeah i should that way and that is how i feel very inspired about this place because i never got got bored of this place every time i come i see these footsteps i feel like neil armstrong took, took the first steps but there are many more that are to follow and uh here there is a craving uh down the says one small step for man a giant leap for mankind that is the gentleman there who used to study here in 1950s he was a student just like me or you and uh, he was never a topper of any class but what he was was he was a passionate aviator or he was passionate about flying planes at an age of 8 he started flying planes and other things so um, what his story tells me is that you don't need to excel in all the things or all the subjects but you need to be very good at one thing and that is your passion what you are passionate about you should care about that and you should excel in that field so his story reminds of that nobody knew him before his uh, apollo missions he was very quiet person but when he did something the whole world came to know so i would encourage all of you to learn from his life that we should do something similar like we can stay quiet but through our performance through our passion we can actually excite the world that we have done something which is remarkable and uh, inspires a whole next generation or generations to follow so uh, this is the gentleman there and this is his building where some of us study i will show you some more cool things hope you can still hear me with my mask and as i said again it's yuri gagarin's day but it's not just his day it's about human space flight So I will show you something cool that not Armstrong, but his 
other friends got from moon so this other friend uh, the unfortunate part is he also studied at purdue but he passed away in an accident there was a fire in his uh, spacecraft so he passed away along with another purdue student is gus grisom so he was a great engineer and in his memory there is a this whole this this is very interesting thing this is how earth looks from the moon that's how the astronauts saw it 12 of them landed on the moon and this is a piece of moon rock that they got i don't know if it's easy to see or not but this is uh, from apollo 17 and apollo 17 mission was also led by somebody who studied here at purdue it's eugene serner i had the opportunity to shake hands with him his hands are so huge uh, my whole hand went in his uh hands like a piece of cake or something but that is some of the things to excite you about human space flight there used to be a hall of astronaut fame or something but right now i went and saw and i think because of the pandemic they have removed some of the things but i will show you something cool from the second floor so we'll take you there this is very inspiring place to come and work or learn from others now this is i am on the second floor those who like flying planes test pilots for them there is this replica of a boeing aircraft donated by us air force but this is regarding human space flight so this is apollo 1 module i told you about an incident that happened or i should rather say accident that happened in which three astronauts passed away two of them were from purdue one was roger shaff and second is gus grisson so they were in early days they were trying to study how to take people to the moon and in that process they had some incident related to oxygen like there was 100% oxygen inside that module and it got fire and as soon as it got fire they were not able to remove the astronauts in time so their sacrifice paved the way for so many others to go is something written about that uh, capsule replica and these are the three gentlemen i don't know if you can see those three guys they are very brave and purdue in honor of gus grisom has an entire department industrial engineering department is called the grisom department so that's a bit of some of the things here although there are a lot of other things like you can see the planes flying up in the air all the time and that's a fun part because i've been to other universities but this is one where every time we go there is somebody flying the plane in the air so it's very inspiring every day to come even to just walk outside so now i am in my office and i can safely remove my mask and hope you can still hear me and i am wearing this uh, costume today you can say costume you can say work clothes while i am in other part of the world say mars but what i would say is you will come to know uh, in the later part of the presentation which i am going to start right now i will share my screen hope you are able to see that uh, so i am uh, am i still audible perfectly fine yes uh, before you continue may i give you your short intro to the students definitely yes all right students uh, are you able to hear me properly well, uh, okay yes. so i hope you enjoyed this wonderful tour uh, not many people get to see what you saw right now so thank you shitesh so much for this you know uh, amazing tour of this 
historical and such a wonderful and marvelous place. Uh, so dear students, and all those of you who are visiting us from all over, uh, I would like to introduce my friend over here. Uh, he is Dr. Kshitish Mohan. He is right now uh, doing his postdoctoral uh, research studies at Purdue University. Uh, and he has also uh, obtained his doctorate, that is PhD and his master's degree from the same place. Uh, he has completed his B.Tech in India. Uh, that is a very inspiring thing for us, uh, you know, uh, to know that somebody from our roots worked so hard and, you know, had that kind of passion to be able to reach such a wonderful place. Uh, he, he then, uh, after his engineering, he had joined Infosys Technologies, uh, but then the call of space uh, brought him to Purdue. Uh, I hope I'm right. Yes, that is <laughs> right. And uh, let me tell you a bit about his research areas, uh, interest areas. Uh, his research areas are in optimal control theory, uh, atmospheric flight mechanics, and human class Mars missions. Uh, he was the first person from Purdue University to lead a team to the Mars Desert Research Station, uh, which is an analog for the Martian desert, where people, uh, scientists, engineers, all sorts of research people can go there, stay there for a few days, uh, that will simulate Martian environment. And from there, they can, you know, uh, get a feel of what's, uh, what it's like to live there. Uh, so that's a, that's a very short intro for a very accomplished personality like him. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you again. Uh, welcome from Ames. You already know, what most of you know what we all do. Uh, we cater to special education in STEM for students of 9th to 12th standards. Uh, most of you also are a part of it. And we are hoping to see more of you in the near future. With this, I'd like to transfer the reins to the guest of today, Dr. Shidish Mohan. Thanks, Hemant, uh, for the wonderful introduction. And he said a lot of things about me, which like I'm still a very small person and uh, I'm just following my dreams or passion. Nothing much more different than that. And I feel every single person, including everyone on this call, is very special uh, in something or the other. Uh, so all that is that I followed certain set of uh, a path or I followed a path that led me here. Uh, but it's just like I... I was passionate about it. That's that's the only different thing. Like I never gave up my passion. Uh, and today, uh, like I'm waking up and coming here, is to share that same passion with you in belief that some of you might uh, take a similar path, uh, not exactly like me, but maybe in something you are passionate about. Um, so hope uh, my talk can uh, help you with that. Uh, and without further ado, I will share my screen and Hopefully, I uh, it says host has disabled sharing screen. Just a uh, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Just check now. Yeah. Uh, just one moment. Um, is just a small question. Yes. Uh, okay. Would you be okay uh, taking questions in between or at the end? Uh, anything is fine with me as such. Okay. Uh, so that then, uh, uh, according to you, uh, either we'll keep the participants for mute or we can allow them to interact. And that's up to you. Yeah, sure thing. I think my screen, screen got frozen. Something happened. Okay. 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 We can hear and uh, see you though. Okay. Uh, just one moment. All right, I think my screen is open. I'm trying to share it now. Can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. All right. I'll try to. Okay, I hope you can see this. Yes, we can. Yeah, so. Uh, I will be telling a few things to you. Like I said, I the whole intent is to uh, not inspire you in some ways, but 
maybe help guide you with few things that I've seen and uh, to share some of the things that I've learned uh, just because of my passion towards human space flight. And the topic for today or what I'm going to share is humans to Mars, challenges and solutions. Because uh, according to me and some of my friends and many others on this uh, beautiful uh, blue world, uh, there is a next home that is waiting for humans to go and explore. Um, I will tell about like why we care about going to Mars and things like that, because many people say like, what's the use of all of that? Uh, before I begin, uh, you will see a photo of uh, one of the great guys who stayed amongst us is uh, Shushan Singh Rajput. Uh, why I have his photo is because he was very passionate, uh, not just about making films and doing a lot of other things. Um, he was a brilliant brain and he wanted to be an astronaut as well. Um, I don't know how many people know about that fact, uh, but he was a very inspiring soul uh, to many of us. And he was trying to send many Indian students to NASA. Uh, so he was doing a great job, but unfortunately uh, he left us, uh, but he's still there in our hearts and uh, he keeps inspiring us. So I kept him at the center uh, for that matter. Uh, and you see on the right, there is another photo of one of the places I went to. This is what uh, Heyman sir has been talking about is um, the Mars Desert Research Station, where we have the experiential learning, which I will be talking about. And on the left of the screen, you see something called entry, descent, and landing. As the word suggests, you enter Mars, you descend and land, and hopefully not crash on Mars. So that's the intent of that. Uh, so moving on to the next screen, hopefully I can, yes. So uh, like again, Himansa said, my journey started all from India and I keep telling all my friends here that I owe so much to India. Uh, all the way I think the problem solving approach all stems from what all I learned uh, right from my kindergarten classes. Um, I am pretty sure I could not have done so many things if I was not in India. So I'm very blessed to be an Indian citizen, to be born in India, in such a great nation, uh, which allows me to freely express myself, to learn a lot of things. Um, and of course, there are like every country has some sort of problems. Uh, we talk so many great things about the United States, but uh, when I come here, I see so many issues. So I can tell you for sure there is no place which is perfect. Um, but our country is actually really, really great in a lot of things. And we admire it more so once we leave that uh, beautiful nation and come outside and admire it, uh, like some of the beautiful things it offers. So I did all my education in a convent school back there. Uh, uh, the sisters there were very kind to me. And um, mostly I got educated from my South Indian teachers. Um, they uh, were very strict and all that helped me to be very disciplined. Uh, so if your teachers, including him and sir, ask you to be disciplined, it's for your own good, because today I'm very disciplined because of my teachers. I owe them a lot. Uh, and then fortunately, like I, like many uh, students back in India, we dream of going to IITs uh, if we are aiming for engineering. Uh, and many others go to uh, other places if they are going for medical science or uh, some other uh, kind of professions which people want to pursue. Uh, so for me, at first, you won't believe that my parents wanted me to be a medical doctor. And uh, they dreamt of me as a trauma surgeon or a dentist or whatnot. Uh, and I was like, you know, if you have seen the movie Laksh, uh, Rithik Roshan did not know what he wants to do in life. Uh, so I used to be like that. I used to question myself, uh, I don't know what I want to do. I want to join army. I want to join air force. I want to be a teacher. All of those are noble, noble professions, uh, nothing wrong in that. But I got a calling when I was um, looking at this mission of uh, space shuttle STS-105 or something uh, in which uh, Kalpana Chawla was aboard. And uh, she was going to space for the second time and was returning back. And my uh, parents, like the entire Indian media was showing uh, her school, her teachers, her friends and her whole story. And through that process, I learned more and more about human space flight. And me and my sister had conversations like how people go to space, uh, why they go to space and all those basic questions. So that inspired me to learn more about this field. And unfortunately, uh, within two hours of all this discussion, I see an accident and she passed away in front of her eyes. 
so that moved me a lot. Uh, I still remember the day. It was Feb 1 or Feb 2 in between that time. Uh, and 2003, that was my 10th class. I was about to give my board exams. And that changed me. Like, I really thought I should, like, this is the field I want to be in. I want to inspire the next set of people. And I want myself to be in the human space flight arena. Uh, but how do I do that? Because in India, there, is, um, there are very limited institutions that teach about human space flight. Forget about human space flight. There are very few institutions that teach about aerospace engineering. Uh, so I had uh, situations where I used to be in Delhi, uh, not Delhi, but close by Noida. And I couldn't get books related to aerospace very easily. I have to travel to IIT Kanpur, uh, which was almost 400 kilometers away or so. Uh, and then I used to learn with my friends there. So it was not that easy at that time to gain access to uh, some of these materials. So I used to think like, why is it so hard for people to learn about this field? So what I wanted to ensure that uh, I should make it easier for the next generation, or I should do something which might make it easier for others. So with that intent, I wanted to join uh, some of these prestigious IITs. And uh, as you know, there are a handful set of people who make it, and there are a lot more who cannot actually make it. Uh, so I was in that bigger batch. And in that three or six hours of exams, I couldn't perform as well as others. Uh, but still, I was able to land it at the institution named GSS-8 Noida. I'm thankful to them for including me in their uh, institution. And I learned mechanical engineering there. And from there, uh, it was not like an IIT. So we know it's difficult to do things there. But even if there was no aerospace department there, through my passion, I actually founded an aerospace organization there. And what I used to do is I used to learn from IIT Kanpur friends, like I, the friends that I had at IIT Kanpur. And I used to bring all that knowledge to JSS 8 Noida students. And we used to form teams and make these water rockets or gliders or boomerangs and participate. And funniest part is we used to fill like coaches of train and go and participate in the national contest. And we used to win prizes. And that used to give us a lot of confidence that uh, it's not about place, it's about passion at the end of the day. Like there are talented students everywhere in India. It's just about the right set of guidance, right amount of passion that is needed uh, to gain success. So from there at GSS 8 Noida, I always have the intention to go and pursue something like Kalpana Chawla, like I said, I was inspired by her career. So I hope I can click again. Yeah, so I went to a place called Infosys, and this is again another funny story that I was trying to apply to these four uh, American institutions, uh, including University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, Purdue University, University of Texas, Austin, and Colorado Boulder. All these are like very nice universities among top 20, um, but I couldn't go to a place where I dreamt to go. It was Georgia Tech, actually, it's not in the list. And there is... Um, special lab there called Space Systems Design Lab, SSTL. And that's where uh, there are a lot of people who work on uh, landing things on Mars. And that's what excited me the most because that's, the, uh, that's our next home. So how do we reach here? That's a very challenging task. But I couldn't get there because they had limitations on um, some of these projects which are restricted only to US citizens. And uh, I'm very proud of my citizenship. So I don't want to be a US citizen as such. I respect them, uh, but I'm happy with my citizenship. So I said, okay, I will apply to other institutions because there are a lot more uh, which offer great programs. But in between all of that time, uh, sometimes we feel like, oh, we couldn't succeed. Like we couldn't go to some place where we wanted to in one go. Never feel uh, let down with those things because in the meantime, you can actually do something useful. Uh, even sometimes we feel we are sitting at home doing nothing, you can actually do a lot of things, even while uh, you think you are not doing anything. So in that time, I actually went and applied for Infosys Technologies, uh, which basically took my English test more than anything else. They didn't care about my programming skills because they knew if I'm smart enough, they can actually hone my skills, programming skills. So Infosys is known for giving great training, uh, six months of training, which is equivalent to a Bachelor of Science degree in computer science in the United States. So in six months, every day from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., I was working hard on computer science. And I was from mechanical engineering. So I knew nothing about computers. Then I 
came to know a lot about computers and why we need a knowledge about computers these days is because we solve a lot of problems which cannot be solved by hand, especially in the field of aerospace engineering. It is so complicated. You cannot even touch like the pencil and solve that. Um, you need uh, to make your hands dirty with coding. So that's why I learned the basics. Infosys teaches you the basics. And that actually helped me a lot in my career. So I'm very thankful to Infosys Technologies for accepting me as well. Now, from there, I applied to these four universities and then I started getting rejects. And I started questioning myself, like, am I good enough to make to US? Will my dream ever come true? Will I ever go there where I wanted to? So I got rejects from the lower rank universities and I was very shocked. And I thought maybe I will never reach there. But the fun part again is like the better universities, which is University of Michigan, Ann Arbor and Purdue, which are number three and four at that time in the US, uh, they chose me. And I was very happy that, oh, somehow I reached there. And I had no idea about Purdue University that it had like 25 astronauts at that time. I just knew that it was among top four or five universities. So when I learned more about it, I came to know, oh, this is the same place where Neil Armstrong studied, where Eugene Cernan studied, who is the last or the latest man on moon, uh, where Gus Grissom studied, where there are so many other space shuttle astronauts. So very inspiring place, I chose that. And from there, I actually went on for uh, some international experience as well. So again, I will encourage uh, most of the students, like whenever you get a chance in life, uh, what these international experiences bring us is a global perspective on things. Uh, because when we are in India, we have a particular set of thinking. We work in a certain set, which is great. It's not bad, but we should always look to work with other set of people or other type of people who are from different countries because each country has some core technology or core competency. They are good at something. So if we learn from them, there is nothing wrong. So I was very impressed with Japan because uh, Japanese people are known for attention to detail and they are very organized. And we Indians are somehow we have this organization in chaos. We get things done, see our traffic, like somehow our traffic functions, even with all of that chaos. So uh, that is the beauty of India. Like we somehow function with all chaos, but Japan is known for attention to detail. So I tried to learn from them their way of doing things. So I went to University of Tokyo and Keio University. And what they let me do is do hands-on things, which Purdue was not letting me do as much. So I went there, did some hands-on things, saw some satellites in action called Micro Dragon, which is a Vietnamese satellite. So I met Vietnamese students in all of that. Uh, and I, I met some South Korean students, some Chinese students. Uh, so I learned from all of them. And then uh, after I finished my master's and PhD at Purdue, I went to a university called Auburn University, which is in Alabama, so south of United States. Uh, you can consider it maybe almost like Tamil Nadu of United States. That's where I was for some time, a very hot place. But I was actually uh, another interesting thing throughout my career, if you see, uh, I was first a mechanical engineer, then a computer science person. And then I went to do something related to Mars. Then I moved on to applied math. And from there, I moved to outer space applications, which are sending things to moon. And then from there, I again came back to Purdue, where I'm learning about artificial intelligence. So what I will tell you through my experience is, whenever you feel complacent, or you feel like, okay, I'm very good at one area, immediately try to do something else as well. Like don't fear of doing something new. Try to increase your skill set because that makes you a very strong person. Always be uh, very good at something, but try to gain more and more skills because that makes you extremely useful human resource. So that's what I've been trying to do. And successfully I have been maneuvered all these uh, career paths. And after all of this, where do I go from here? I think I should come back to India and I should help India just like I told my story that I used to go study from IIT Kanpur folks and used to bring knowledge back to JSS and we used to do a lot of great things. Uh, I plan to do a similar thing. Like I learned a lot of things here in the US and I want to bring all that talent uh, or all the information that I gained to help projects back in India because I know they, there are a lot of awesome things happening in India uh, and people like me can actually be useful in some ways. Uh, so that's my goal. Uh, and in ISRO, particularly, I'm looking at two play, uh, things to uh, add value to. One is 
uh, we have sent mars orbiter mission or mission to mars but that was an orbiter mission uh, what i plan to contribute to is landing on mars which is extremely complicated and second thing is like we are talking about the uris day i want to see civilian astronauts from india right now we are sending gagan uh, ganganyaan mission with yomnauts uh, but that is from indian air force which is a military mission uh, so we want to see more science missions because that's when it is more useful uh, for humanity so that's all about uh, my career and everything and again i will tell you i was about to become a doctor but i didn't listen to my parents they did all types of things uh, i was surrounded by around 50 medical doctors who told me i will regret my de uh, decision in my life but i can tell you i never regretted i am very happy because i chose this um, i had lot of failures on the way but that did not deter me because that's a part of the process so if you have failures in your process enjoy the failure because that will make your success have even more flavor you will taste the success even more if you have failures if you have a success all the time you will never know what uh, failure is or what actual meaning of success is so uh, when i was in school i was always in like top student i never saw failure and as soon as i left my school and i went to uh, another place where there was lot of tough situations thrown on me i started failing and that was because i got used to easy situations but i became tough with time and that's very important so don't give up don't be harsh on yourself see this as a process failure is actually very important to learn to learn how successful feel so i will try to keep this like 15 minutes or so of presentation so that we have enough time for q and a as well because i'm pretty sure there might be questions arising um and it's always good to ask a lot of questions like himan sir would have told in his classes that every question is very important uh so i will again talk about the topic of today is human space flight because uh that's what uris day is all about and why we care about human space flight why do we need to send humans to space why not just send uh, robots or just send satellites to space what's the need for sending humans um where are we heading to with indian space program film knots and the future also i will be talking about my passion uh, in this field is entry descent and landing like i said i wanted to go to georgia tech and fortunately i came to purdue uh, where i still was able to learn about these edl technologies uh, so what are these ch uh, challenges related to edl um, and what are these viking era which is 1976 era technologies and post that how are we trying to land things on mars so in short we are trying different things to land things on mars and uh, with all of that my masters study was all about this flying problem versus the falling problem so most people are solving the falling problem and i uh, my advisor and i we introduced this flying problem or flying on mars uh, and then i will talk about the uh, costume that i wearing today is related to analog astronautics or learning through experience so experiential learning and i was actually the executive officer of a crew crew 186 uh, i will be sharing some cool pictures related to that so first is human space flight where the motivation is why do we go to space uh, one thing is like right now if you ask most of the students why do you want to go to space they say oh wow we want to go to space because of these guys we see these as our heroes as our inspiration uh, this is like yuri gagarin who was the first man to go to space Uh, April twelfth, nineteen sixty-one, sixty years back exactly, and then I showed you this other gentleman uh, who was a great aviator, one of the best pilots ever on this planet, uh, Neil Armstrong. Uh, so he was the first man on moon uh, on uh, July twenty-nine, if I'm not wrong, nineteen um, sixty-nine. He landed on moon. So these are the two sets of our inspirations. But is it all about these heroes? Like, why did they go to space? That's the question we have to ask them. Uh, of course they are not there here to answer that but i can tell on their behalf why they went okay i'm trying to move to the next one it's because they cared about these options for humanity like if we just stay on this planet we become single planet species humans are constricted to this blue world it's a beautiful world but if god forbid something happens to this planet where do we run that's one huge question it's an existential question that where do we run 
So I believe like uh, apart from humans, nobody else can take life beyond because they don't have this consciousness or the ability to think through problem solving to an extent where human brain can think. So that's what happened to dinosaurs. They couldn't go beyond this planet. I, it would have been fun to imagine uh, dinosaurs going to space, but that did not happen. Those guys just stayed here, enjoyed their life, had fun, but something untoward happened and they are all are gone. We just see their fossils, right? And if we don't do something, our next species will see our fossils. So that will be the end of human species. So Elon Musk, others at NASA, ISRO, everyone wants us to go beyond because that's a more exciting future. Uh, we are more than on one home. And we as humans are explorers by default. It's in our DNA. We have been hunters, gatherers, wanderers for 99.99% of our tenure on this planet. We never stick to one place. We just keep moving. It's because we are curious beings. And for that very reason, we will never stay here. We'll keep moving. So that's about one of the reasons. Uh, again, like I said, humans are actually life insurance agents. Many people see humans in a wrong way because they think like wherever we go, wherever we, we, exploit. Uh, we are known as exploiters. But So going back to the next uh, previous slide, if I can, oh, yeah. So basically we are actually brand ambassadors of life. Like if life is a brand, we are the brand ambassadors. Uh, Hemant, you can hear me, like. Okay. I hope I am- Yes, yes, audible. you are audible. Yes, yeah. you are audible. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And why India needs astronauts is because India, like I said, is a great nation. It's a peaceful nation, non-aggressor, never attacked any country. Um, even the small countries like Bhutan, Nepal, we never attacked anyone. We are friends with everyone. We want everyone to do good. Other thing is we have 1.31 1 at least billion people, if not, like there might be more by now. Uh, but we have very rich human resource and we have a lot of young people. We have a youthful population. Uh, we have an intent of being a superpower in good ways, not to exploit things, but to do good. And uh, we actually, just like right now, things happen. India sends a lot of satellites to space. You will see 104 satellites sent to space by India. And many of them are from other countries. Imagine like 10 astronauts sent to space, six from Africa, four from India. This is a future that India can make and show because there are a lot of these countries who cannot send astronauts or do human space flight on their own. But Actually, ISRO can help other countries as well, not just India, but the world. So made in India or make in India and made for the world. This concept can easily be done. Uh, and this is very related to the Atmanirbhar thing that I will be talking about later. So India has a lot to offer to the world. I have no doubt about that. And a lot of you gentlemen out there are the future. I see very bright future through you. And that's why I'm talking and spending a lot of time here for you because I really see a lot of hope. So moving on to the next one is there is a future like right now being astronaut is termed as cool or dangerous or there are a lot of things uh, which people talk about about astronauts. There have been a hand not handful but say 500 something astronauts in space and there might be many more because SpaceX is launching more astronauts and space will be accessible to more people but there will be a future soon where actually everyone would need to be an astronaut because we will have other homes. Like right now we go from uh, our hometown to some other place to work and come back. It might be not impossible because uh, sometime back there were not flights. So we couldn't take a flight and go to some other part of the world. But right now you can see like easily I can fly from India to the US, study here, go back to India, spend my time in summer and come back and all that. There might be a time where it would be similar. We go to some asteroid as an astronaut, and then we spend some time there, do something, come back, take education in some, you know, Mars and come back. It might be a very uh, possible future. Uh, I don't think it's impossible because humans can make it possible. 
And if you have not seen the TV series Expanse, I'm not sure how many of you are, are allowed because there is a age restriction to see that, I'm sure. But uh, whenever you are of uh, allowable age to see that, uh, this is one of the very cool TV series I've seen. And it shows the future where everyone is almost an astronaut. It becomes a cool term. Uh, so this is what I believe a future is for all of us. Second topic is my interest in this area is um, Mars, as I said, is our next home. There are many places to go to. There is moon. Moon, unfortunately, does not have air. It does not have an atmosphere. Uh, it is just very close, accessible. So that's why we go to Chanda Mama Noorke. Uh, we just enjoy our time seeing uh, and staring at the sky every time we see moon. Uh, but Mars is actually um, better suited for humans to stay. And for that to happen, there are many challenges, uh, especially you can see today itself, uh, Heman sir and you are uh, in India, I'm here in the US and we have communication issues, like even being on earth. So imagine sending things to space. There are a lot of communication issues. We send a signal, it takes time to go, a few minutes, then it reaches, then something is done, then it comes back. So it takes a lot of like, you know, time to communicate and communication is very important uh, to get things done. Uh, there is radiation issues because right now we are in this comfortable, uh, warm atmosphere of Earth, which protects us from all these uh, harmful radiations, UV light and all, whatnot. Uh, but that's not the case when you leave this warm, uh, beautiful motherly Earth. Also, uh, when we go to space, we don't have oxygen and a lot of these life support systems. So we need environment control and life support there, ECLSS. Uh, also, we need to develop like technology. home you start feeling like you know uneasy like oh i want to go outside i want to meet friends i want to say hello to them i want to see natural life beauty everything but you cannot do so so you get frustrated that might happen people might lose sanity and also there is physiological effects because right now we are in earth's gravity so things are happening on our body right now as we are sitting or standing but when you go to microgravity or space or beyond then the gravity is less and uh, your body starts wearing down, your muscles, your bones, uh, your eyesight, all starts getting uh, bad. So those are challenges. But what I was looking here at Purdue was how to go and land on Mars, which is a very difficult thing. So uh, what are the challenges like with this entry, descent and landing? Is that there is a, an atmosphere of Mars, which is great. Okay, there is atmosphere in Mars, then we have some air and then you know we can breathe possibly, we can live there. But then it is not very thick, it is thin. So it is not like earth. So that's why it does not pro provide enough, like, you know, breaks. When we come to a uh, Martian atmosphere, it does not provide the break. We cannot slow down. So we come with a fast speed, we cannot slow down, we crash, we smash the uh, surface and we are blown apart. Other problem is that, uh, okay, if it is not there, the atmosphere is thin, we can just use rockets and we can just come down and you know slow down um, or we can use some other technique but this is also thick atmosphere thick enough that it will burn our uh, spaceship when you come it will burn your thing so it will not provide the break and it will also burn you down so there are two problems and then uh, if you land on the martian surface if you don't land properly it's not like, you know, you're landing on a plane surface or like a runway of an airport. It's like up and down. It's not well paved. So
minutes to go. Okay, I will speed up a bit so that we have time for Q&A. Uh, so I'm talking about the EDL architectures or the entry, descent, and landing techniques. There are five of them, uh, which I've shown on this picture, if you see. Uh, don't worry about the terms. These are like fancy names. Uh, say, call it Suresh, Ramesh, uh, whatever. You can give any name to them, right? We don't care about name. Uh, name. We care about the concept. So this is Hyad, uh, which is just a name. And you can see the full form here. I'm not going into that. But all it does, it, it opens a huge, uh, you can say, um, balloon kind of thing. It's called balut, basically. But it's like a huge um, rubber tube kind of thing that opens. And because of that huge thing, you can actually have a lot of braking. We are trying to basically come at a high speed. And we are trying to break the speed. Like we are applying brakes. Somehow we have to slow down. So if you have these huge things, like huge, uh, this rubber tube type of thing, then we can apply the brakes just because of the surface on Mars. Another thing is ADAPT, which is like an umbrella kind of thing. Like I use an umbrella and try to slow down. An umbrella is coming down and trying to slow down. So these are all drag based. Like there is drag. You are trying to slow down against the atmosphere. Another, like I said, which was very uh, much used or supported by SpaceX is SRP or supersonic retropropulsion. What this means is we come down and we fire rockets. Now rockets can take us up, you know, but if you are landing, you can fire the retro rockets or the ones that go in the opposite direction. And you can land like that, like the rockets is firing up and you can land like this. So that is one. There are problems with that because you know that rocket fuel is very expensive. Every amount of fuel that you spend or you send to space costs a lot of money, like thousands of dollars. So we cannot do that. So what if we use something that is available for free in Mars is the Martian atmosphere. So for that, we can use high lift bodies, uh, one of which is space shuttle. The space shuttle has high lifting properties, almost uh, the lift to drag ratio or how much it can fly is four almost. Uh, so there are two types, mid L by D or high L by D. Don't worry about the terms again. But all I want to say is there are many ways of landing on Mars. And what I was looking at Purdue is on this lifting ways or how to fly on Mars. So uh, most people right now, when they solve the problem, forget about these equations as, as well. Uh, basically, people are trying to fall. Like they are trying to stop a rock. A rock is falling down and people are trying to stop it somehow. And they're opening these parachutes or these uh, rubber tube kind of things or this umbrella and whatnot. And they are trying to slow down some. But what we propose instead of crashing is we looked at this term in this equation, which is trying to kind of, you know, accelerate. If you know the term accelerate, it's like instead of slowing down, it's moving even faster. We want to slow down, but if it becomes more faster, it's not doing as good. So this was doing the damage. We looked at the same thing in a different way. And we started looking at this cruising, like we come and we use the lift of the vehicle and we start flying or we start lofting. And what this lofting does is in the Southern hemisphere of Mars, like if you see Mars in the Southern hemisphere or the lower part, there are a lot of places which are hilly. Like I said, there are Himalayas kind of at the lower parts. So you cannot just go and land there because they are already very high you need to have the ability to cruise or to loft and go and land on them like that or like that. So forget about these terms as well. I will show like what I came up during my master's is uh, this is a particular style of doing things. And good news is Elon Musk and his team saw this idea and they saw this in 2015 and they chose this idea in 2017. Uh, he exposed this idea in 2017 IAC. So we enter, we do a dive phase, and we follow these different types of you know, conditions that, oh, the vehicle should not burn, the vehicle should not break down. And then at a certain point, we just start cruising, and then we do the loft. And see, I told you there are like kind of Grand Canyons or Himalayas here. So we can just go here and do the terminal descent. What do we mean by terminal descent is we are at a safe height, and from the safe height, we can easily come down using existing techniques. So 
so far what nasa and others have been doing is they follow something which was done in 1970s and if you ask people why you do so is because it is tried and tested it never failed so far so why do something new if until we reach the limits we keep trying the same thing that's what people from nasa tell but i tried something new and this is like futuristic now i will tell something about analog astronautics which is a specially different topic and this is something i think hemant sir would be doing and i have seen some of his awesome videos where he talks about gravity wells and some other things which he teaches through experience or shows using certain things not just you know some computer coding or uh, through just writing some equations he shows you those things so i like that type of teaching which is uh, showing or making people learn through experience so i got an opportunity to actually um, form and lead a team and i call myself an accidental leader because i always ask others like hey are you doing this are you doing this and when nobody does i say okay uh, well i will go ahead and do this so in this uh, case as well i went ahead formed this organization called mars society purdue chapter which is now purdue mars and um, what i thought was always like to go and do things because until we get our hands dirty and until we learn through experience uh, we don't get uh, enough you know knowledge and uh, that is what i learned through my experiences in japan as well when i actually saw the satellite i learned so much more that oh this is adcs oh this is this part of the satellite and this goes in space so this is so cool so at this particular place what we do is we go for 15 days and we just stay inside this small tin can uh, which is an idea proposed by dr robert zubrin who is the founder of mars society and it's a very interesting place very similar to mars i will show some pictures later on and many people go and study different types of things so you see a set of gentlemen and a, a lady who is uh, next to me uh, all these are great um, future astronauts i would say i have no doubt uh, these set of people would become astronauts in future as well very passionate set of people uh, but they all basically wanted to do something interesting at this place not just related to aerospace but geology agriculture astrobiology astronomy human factors virtual reality communication rover exploration and many others like i've just listed eight because there was not that much space the great thing about aerospace is whatever you are learning right now even in uh, himan sir's class or anywhere else you are going to use that at some point in time in an aerospace project that's the beauty of aerospace it's a special child of mechanical engineering which uh, i really admire and that's why i am in this field and what we did was uh, we did lot of experiments like my other friends were looking at uh, microbial contamination like how, how to avoid that because when we go from here to mars we take our bacteria along with that uh, some of my friends were looking at communication like how do we communicate on mars if we don't have like we don't have a gps there uh other friends were looking at some other uh, aspects um like growing food on mars which is very important because if you don't have farmers on mars what will we eat uh, if you have seen martian movie you, you see how important it was for him to grow potato to survive for that many days uh, so all of that is very important and just one moment okay so what i did was like as an indian what do i bring to the table uh, so i said like from human factors point of view yoga and meditation which is a part of our culture has not been extensively studied for uh, these human exploration missions and to reduce the stress levels of people because when we go to space and do things we might get crazy so if we do yoga and meditation we keep our focus calm and our physiology is also kept intact so every day i used to do 22 different uh, exercises and i also was able to share uh, my tea with cup of tea with other uh, astronauts and i made masala chai for all these um, my american friends and italian friends and canadian friends so that was fun part and this is an article from times of india that was published uh, i'm thankful to uh, lakshman ji for that uh, so as it is it said like i got them a taste of yoga and chai um, so it's all about like what we take along with us like how do we contribute to the world made in india make made for the world right so uh, 
also i had the opportunity to do this cool experiment where i was a lost astronaut so because uh, on mars there are a lot of storms and when this martian storm comes then we cannot see anything uh, the martian movie showed that things are like flying and breaking but that's not true uh, all what mars storm does is like the visibility is very bad so we cannot see and if we cannot see we cannot do a lot of things uh, so we used our exper uh, experience as pilots and we uh, made this setup around our visor or you know our helmet uh, and i was not able to see things i wore this thing and i had a lot of difficulties you can see in walking and doing things and ultimately i used something called yaguda antenna which is a very simple setup to communicate uh, and we had this morse coded information exchange from the habitat or my home uh, at that place and you can see in this picture that's my home and this is my yaguda antenna and this is me so eventually with all of these we were able to test that if i am lost in space i could uh, or on mars i could still find my way through this communication setup and these are some of the cool pictures that we took uh, this is astro photography that we did some of our uh, colleagues and these are some of the cool pictures from there you can see it looks very much like mars and these uh, this is the foot that we do on mars and this is some of the time we spent and now i would like to also share that um, apart from all this like i was talking about this atmanirbhar concept and um, as an indian citizen i also thought like i want to contribute towards building isro strong or other aerospace institutes strong uh, and helping indian students becoming better than they are uh, and excel uh, i was also looking at ways so that we can help our own indian citizens um, not being just an somebody who loves aerospace but also who uh, loves india so i came up with this app which actually helps you know that whenever we are buying things whenever we go for shopping uh, or whenever we take a decision related to buying knowingly or unknowingly we are making mistake we are uh, not knowing uh, what we are buying so we take some decisions in hurry we just see the price of commodity and we might be giving money to somebody who whom we should not maybe or whom we might not want so i will show you first uh, this trailer or you can say a snippet and hope you can hear my voice or the voice hindustani tea even you got fooled by the name it's the voice only indian by name but unknowingly yes it is all your money every day is filling the bank accounts of foreign companies this is hurting our country financially imports are rising as against exports and our rupee is becoming weak against other currencies our local businesses are shutting down as a result but don't worry now we have the atmanirbhar app that aims at building a self reliant india by slightly changing the way you buy your products through this app you can select those products that benefit india those products that financially help india this app eventually aims at improving our exports over imports and our rupee will equally become strong like other currencies our local businesses would be able to prosper and you will be able to benefit from high quality products made in india the atmanirbhar app an app that intends to serve the world with made in india products this app will make you an even smart consumer will help you support local businesses will remove all sorts of confusions and for today and after the repair india so that was a short snippet hindustan and hopefully i can show this um so basically the app that we made is to encourage the campaign that was uh, or the clarion call that was called by the prime minister of our country uh, modi ji and um, basically it doesn't matter like if uh, our prime minister says or modi ji says even before that actually my team started working last april almost one year back uh, it does take a lot of effort to make these apps uh, and again you can see i am an aerospace engineer i am not an app maker but uh, just because of my passion uh, towards our own countrymen i thought i should do something for my country uh, and this is free of cost uh, nothing is charged from anyone this is built for national interest 
uh, and why somebody should have this app is not just because it's a fancy app uh, with some features, but actually it tells you if you go to a shop and buy something, it will tell you if this product is benefiting India or not, because most of the apps out there, they tell you if something is made in India or not. But that is not actually true. There are many things that are made in India. Uh, even Coca-Cola products are made in India, but Coca-Cola or Pepsi are of the United States. So all the money that you spend on a Coke or Pepsi is going to US and not to India. And how that affects in long run is the price of rupees start becoming like more as compared to dollar. We have to pay like 70 rupees for $1. It, uh, it didn't used to be the case in 1950s, $1 was four rupees. So from there we have reached to this stage. It's because we chose that way. We are choosing wrong options. So we should be careful about that and we should help our own countrymen, not because of you know, just pity or because of, you know, patriotism, but actually through my search, I found Indian products are actually very, very good. Uh, we just have not tried them because either they are not advertised much or people just go by, you know, price. They don't even try Indian options. Uh, so the app also shows if you go and find a product, if you see a foreign company or a foreign product, you can see Indian options. So you can click on those and choose those. Uh, also, there are a lot of local companies which are present, for example, say in Maharashtra, in Pune, there might be a very great uh, sweet shop or maybe some other uh, company which is doing great, but maybe other parts of India may not know about it. So um, it lets people know or gives voice to the local businessmen or local people who are doing service. Uh, also, uh, it's all about stories and facts. Like today we are talking about Yuri Gagarin or we are talking about Armstrong because there are very cool stories about them. They are heroes. Similarly, all these Indian companies or products have their own stories. Like how many of you know a story about Nirma? How many of you know that Taj Mahal is not like Taj Mahal tea is not from India? Uh, how many of you know that Desi uh, uh, Chinese or what is the name? The Chinks Chinese is actually not Chinese. Uh, it's all in the name. It's a name play. And there are so many cool stories and facts which people not even know or care about because uh, they don't know about it or they have not heard of it. But once you know those facts and you go to the shop, you will have a different understanding of things. So I highly encourage uh, to check this app. Right now it's still in the review phase. Uh, I was very hopeful by today we, I had the link to share, but it's not there out yet because Google has other plans. Uh, but hopefully that link will be out soon. I will share with Hemant sir. Uh, and again, this is not like forcing anyone to download this app or something. This is built for national interest. Anyone who is interested to download this app and for their own benefit should be actually uh, using that. And we are there on Who, which is our own Twitter, uh, YouTube, because there is no YouTube alternative right now. So we will switch to that as soon as possible. We are on Instagram, Gmail, and also on Twitter for now. Um, but you can contact us there. Maybe. Uh, so that's about it from my end and hope you enjoyed the short presentation I had and I didn't bore anyone. Not at all, not at all. So, uh, yes, uh, I'm going to invite uh, some Q&A for some questions in, uh, from the audience. You can post your questions in the chat box or on Mentimeter. Yes, one we have from Devin Somani, he's from Ahmednagar. Uh, he has a question that how did the early astronauts who went into space come to know that there's no oxygen there? Oh, uh, can you repeat the question? Yes. How did the early astronauts who went into space come to know that there is no oxygen over there? Oh, I think uh, beforehand people knew that there are like problems in space. It's not that they went to space and came to know that there is no oxygen. Uh, and uh, no, uh, you need to know that these uh, first set of astronauts who went uh, were test pilots. So they kind of understood the atmosphere of Earth because they used to fly these uh, hypersonic um, kind of planes, one of which I showed you. Uh, so they used to do all these tests and they knew that as you go up, you might have like uh, with speed, you have G-loading issues as well as you have uh, limited oxygen capabilities. That's why you see them wearing something on their nose, which is supplying them, you know, a good amount of oxygen and things. So they knew kind of that there is issues uh, and oxygen is not like it's completely absent. There is a small amount of uh, all these like atmospheric uh, mixture even up, but the quantity becomes less. Um, and as soon as you go far enough, there is actually no oxygen. 
So this is actually studied not by the earlier astronauts who were test pilots or in the Air Force, but more so by the scientists and engineers. So there is always a ground crew or a mission control that always have a, you know, a, a control over all these things. And they design your kind of home in, home in space. So you need to have this uh, life support system. And that's what I talked about, that you need to have these ECLSS. Yeah. So, so the answer, short answer to your question is, they actually already knew that there are problems with oxygen and all these other things. Yes, uh, one question from a uh, student. Um, let me check that. Yes. Hmm. Uh, one of the uh, questions is from Vineet. Uh, he's, his question is, how can the atmosphere of Mars be used as a fuel? Is it possible? Uh, if it is possible, how can it be done? Oh, this is very interesting question. I don't know if it can be used as a fuel, but I have seen recent studies where, uh, you know, there is a lot of speed with which uh, things are coming on Mars. Like when we enter Mars from a spaceship, its speed is like 6 point, uh, almost 6.6 .6 kilometer per second or even more. So uh, it all depends on like how we are entering. There is like direct entry, like directly you are entering or you do an arrow capture, which is like going around Mars, like a Mars orbiter mission and then coming down, which is slower speed. In any case, there the speed is more. So what some scientists propose is that with that same amount of speed, you can actually break the atmospheric particles in Mars into plasma and mm -hmm. use that plasma to slow you down or provide extra drag. Right. But to use it as a fuel has not been thought of yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's a good question. Maybe hmm. you can explore more about that. Yes. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Himan, to add to yes, this, yes, sure, sure. Uh, on Mars, actually, we have methane, uh, I think, in a good amount. Mm -hmm. And that's why SpaceX and others are looking at methane as a fuel. Correct. Because they are trying to use, like, they are to reaction down. to break down carbon yeah, dioxide. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Correct. They're trying to break down carbon dioxide. There's a lot of CO2, I think, there. Right, right. Uh, I believe we have time for one last question. This is from Shrey. Uh, okay. Uh, what will be, uh, actually I'll combine two questions. What will be the impact of the less gravity of Mars on human health? And one more question from Neil. How uh, that Mars is totally filled with CO2 and all less extensive magnetosphere, which allows UV to enter. So how does that affect the atmosphere and uh, what does it cause to the humans? What are the solutions to protect okay. it? Okay, so the first question is about the gravity and the gravity of Mars is around one third that of Earth. It is um, 3.71 meter per second square almost. Um, because of that, actually things have start happening to us, of course, uh, because we are used to Earth's gravity. So uh, like I showed you how the jump of Neil Armstrong was unusual with that footsteps, you can see there was a huge jump. So we can do some funny things there as well. But actually, uh, as I said, like our body is used to Earth's gravity. So um, the way our bones, muscles, eyes, everything works is different because of that. Rich, and, uh, uh, very yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we are about at the end of our Zoom session. Uh, oh, sorry. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no issues, no issues. What I'll do is I'll post the video on our Facebook live, uh, Facebook app as well. Uh, on our groups page so that uh, and students can post the questions on there on their comments so yeah. as time